Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jan. Uh, I'm the head of the Global Partnership at the Culture and Innovation Hub Philippines, and I'm very happy to welcome you all uh, to our uh, latest uh, webinar for the project. I'm very happy to uh, be part of this. Uh, I just need to figure out hold on the slides. My apologies. Uh, so I'm very happy to be here with my colleague Devin Yoshimoto. We will be together moderating and chairing uh, today's webinar. We plan to go for about two hours. And uh, the purpose of today's webinar is really to introduce the first contributors to the Culture and Innovation Hub in Philippines. Uh, without any uh, further ado, I would like us to have a quick uh, look at the agenda. So we will spend a very uh, short time on, on introduction. Uh, for those of you that might uh, not be so familiar yet with the Culture Innovation Hub project and uh, the facility itself, we will dedicate most of the time uh, to our contributors, which uh, again are a very important part of the project and uh, for the very important part of the future of the Culture Innovation Hub that is to highlight the latest technologies for food cold chain in the Philippines. So uh, we dedicate 90 minutes uh, of this webinar to that particular part and then we have a free Q&A session uh, when all the uh, participants, uh, including the speakers and our listeners, can submit their questions or ask each uh, other. Uh, so very, uh, we will have most likely uh, 20 to 30 minutes dedicated for uh, this part. So a uh, few words in the beginning. Uh, I would like to uh, say uh, a thank you uh, on behalf of the project and all the project partners, and as well as on, on behalf of the uh, Filipino food coaching. Uh, industry uh, for the contributors. Uh, the first contributors that have uh, contributed, uh, that have submitted their contribution uh, to be part of the hub. Uh, I'm very happy to be working with some of the leading companies, uh, global leading uh, industry uh, involved in all sectors of the uh, food cold chain. So we have, today we would like to announce the first nine contributors. We hope that this message uh, will then help inspire the others uh, in the world, uh, some of the leading companies around the world to get in touch with us and to also be part of this very uh, exciting project. So very happy to be working with uh, IHT, member of Daikin Group, with Kerry Transico, with the Central Group in the Philippines, uh, Cold Front, also a local uh, contractor engineering company, uh, and Braco Nidek, uh, known compressor manufacturer, of course, uh, EPTA, uh, with their R290 technology and the ER uh, showcases. Uh, glad to be working also with uh, Panasonic Hussman uh, Group. Uh, finally, uh, Product Blocks, uh, leading startup uh, technology company focusing on the uh, tra uh, transport, uh, refrigeration, uh, refrigerated transport. And finally, uh, the next company that uh, will be providing an important uh, part of the uh, transport refrigeration solution. So thank you again uh, to all these companies. Uh, we will hear from uh, representatives of these companies. We will have an open discussion about both the technology that they are contributing as well as about their take on the sustainable food cold chain. Uh, introducing the companies, uh, let us also look at the, uh, the actual contribution. So nine companies, uh, they are covering a uh, number of Cold chain, food cold chain sectors from uh, transport to retail and industrial refrigeration, transport uh, logistics, monitoring systems, and so on. So uh, the alphabetic order as introduced in the previous slide, I will start with the HD Daikin. Very happy to be, uh, to be receiving the R290 showcases that will be a modular uh, form for the uh, R290 uh, loop water loop demonstration at one of the training rooms at the cold chain facility. Kerry Transicold has uh, uh, contributed with a uh, natural line uh, reefer, CO2 reefer, using CO2 transcritical uh, system to cool the uh, trans transferable, of course, uh, container that will be part of the hub. Uh, the central group uh, is kind enough to offer their insulation panels for the refrigerated truck, the pilot project that we are working on with uh, several members. We have, uh, of course, uh, Coldfront, uh, the local expert working with R290, but also very interested in working with CO2, offering their, their uh, technologies and their capacity on the ground. And Braco Nidek uh, providing the plug and cool unit, the uh, R290 unit that can be integrated into both showcases and uh, cold rooms. Uh, EPTA, uh, ERP, uh, represented by uh, 
of course, uh, Roberto is uh, our uh, contributor also on the R290. So I think it's, it's very interesting to see that several of these contributions are focusing on hydrocarbons, what uh, we see very fitting to the context of Southeast Asia, uh, plug-in uh, hydrocarbon refrigeration. So very excited to have also this contribution from the EPTA group. Uh, finally, Panasonic Hasman, this is our representative of, uh, of the CO2 transcritical technology for retail, but also for the light, uh, light uh, let's say light industrial applications, small cold rooms, cold, uh, cold storage. So this would be, the, in our opinion, the first CO2 transcritical retail application in Philippines. So very exciting to be also working with the uh, Panasonic and Hasman. Uh, product block, as mentioned earlier, uh, representing the, the innovation when it comes to transport, transport refrigerated truck uh, with R290. So this is the pilot product, pilot, pilot project that uh, we work under the umbrella of Coach Innovation uh, Hub with several of the stakeholders, including the uh, final contributor for this round, uh, Toyota uh, Group, uh, the next the company that will be providing a monitoring, remote monitoring system with uh, enhanced functionality. So uh, we will hear more details from today's speakers, uh, representatives of the, of the contributors. And again, I would like us to, uh, to, uh, to applaud these contributors. They represent the, the leading part of the industry. We, we, we are very happy that they recognize the opportunity to be part of this project, to really make it possible to, uh, for the local industry to have access to the latest and best technology out there. So thank you very much, and we are very excited to work with you, but also with, with many others that will hopefully follow your lead. So thank you very much again. And with this, I would like to hand uh, this to my colleague, Devin Yoshimoto, to continue uh, the, this uh, webinar. Of course, I will be here, and I will be available for any questions or uh, further discussion. So thank you, and I'm passing on to my colleague, Devin Yoshimoto. Hello everyone, uh, thank you Jan. And um, yeah, I just want to make sure to give a quick overview real quick uh, before we move on to our speakers of our venue uh, where we will, we will be hosting uh, this equipment that's going to be shipped into the Philippines uh, by our contributors that are present today. Um, we are working with TESDA, the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority. So this is the government agency tasked with the technical education and skills development of the Filipino workforce. So. They're a very important partner and stakeholder to help uh, upskill and train the technicians on the ground in the Philippines to be working with these new technologies. The TESTA Regional Training Center, National Capital Region, is located in Metro Manila, not too far from the port of Manila, and also not too far away from Nino Aquino, Ninoy Aquino International Airport. So it has good access, um, especially for international um, experts, international technicians and engineers to also be coming uh, to the Philippines to help train uh, technicians on the ground. We have a quick overview shot here of where the location is actually going to be on the TESTA campus. Um, if you see on the top left, right, uh, top left corner of the picture, that is the building where we will be hosting the Cold Chain Innovation Hub. This is also a side shot of the building. So the red square that you saw earlier is on the right hand side of the screen. We've also done some quick renderings uh, with our graphic design artists to sort of get an idea of what this, uh, this space could look like uh, in the future and sort of give a, a, a vision of what we uh, see this cold chain innovation hub to really serve as its purpose, uh, being a showcase of low carbon energy efficient food cold chain technology from farm to fork. So we really want to help educate um, all the stakeholders and also the general public on the importance of why creating a sustainable food cold chain in the Philippines is so important and is also very urgent. This is a quick uh, floor plan of the building where we're going to, where we hope to have uh, live running systems. Uh, some of the equipment that we'll, we will be able to be fitting inside of the building would be um, located here in an area where we've designated as the cold storage room where we'll have medium temperature food storage, also low temperature food storage, and we'll also be using, using it for training and demonstration. Um, we'll also have a dedicated training room adjacent to that where we'll also have live running systems uh, such as display cabinets, uh, plug-in systems, that type of equipment. And we'll also have a workshop and exhibition area where we plan to showcase and exhibit and educate the general public and key stakeholders in the Philippine industry 
on the entire on the whole concept of, of sustainable food cold chain. Everything from farm to fork. So this includes uh, rural agricultural development, um, transport, even overseas shipping and logistics, as well as um, urban transport, uh, food and delivery and retail. Um, just really quickly, we are looking for, we are always looking for contributors and we're very open to working with um, those who are interested in contributing to this initiative. We're looking for um, anything, not, not only just equipment, but also training materials. Uh, one of our main goals is education and training. So we want to have, we'd love to have uh, work with those who are interested in donating or um, contributing training materials. Uh, as well as experts, if you can be there um, live on the ground as, a, as an independent expert or even as a manufacturer working with some of the manufacturers or even in academia, uh, we're very interested in work with, working with you. So uh, that's just a really quick overview of our um, venue. And just as a reminder to everyone, if you have any questions for our attendees who will, or our panelists who will be speaking up next, please um, send us your questions in the Q&A box. We're also going to be recording or we are recording this webinar and we'll make this all the presentation slides and the um, all the materials available online. Uh, so make sure to subscribe to our newsletter to make sure uh, to get notified when that is all published. So let me quickly hand it over back to Jan to introduce our speakers. Uh, you know, what? I'll introduce the speakers. <laughs> okay, so um, let me introduce our first speaker, Ms. Uh, Sumitra from AHT. Sumitra, can, can you hear me? Yes, I think. Um, yes, I can. Perfect. Yes, thank you for joining us today. Um, we're very excited to uh, hear your presentation. So please tell us a little bit about AHT, um, about the equipment that you are contributing to the Cold Chain Innovation Hub and why uh, this is such an important initiative for AHT to be working on. So please go ahead and share your screen and uh, let me know if you have any problems, but go ahead. Sure. Okay, hi. Um, hello to everyone, um, to all the Cold Chain Innovation Community members and all the audience. I am Sumitra X Chai, AHT Sales Director for the Southeast Asia. Um, firstly, I would like to uh, thank you to uh, the CCI Hub to organize such a very well ground for sustainable uh, value in Philippines and giving us the opportunity to be a part of this uh, contribution. Um, the question was asked why we decided to work with the CCI Hub Philippines. Actually, um, it's very simple question, I mean answer, because we have the same goals and AHG have been con uh, continuing sustainability and energy efficiency with the safety uh, standard as high as possible. And today we contribute with the R290 bottle loop system for commercial food retail, just um, because of it is quite important and significant that we can have a CO2 uh, equivalent saving a massive amount. Uh, we, I will present it a bit later. Just a very, um, let me take you to uh, a little bit background of AHT. Um, AHT is the leader, um, global leader, in the social uh, commercial plug-in cooling and freezing equipment for the retail market. So we have 1,600 uh, staff worldwide with the full manufacturing site. First in 19, 1959, about 60 years ago in Austria, our production site in Austria. And now we have also a production site in China, Brazil, and USA. So we supplied about um, 113 countries worldwide with uh, 4,700 people, customers. And we have 64% uh, market share um, in Europe and 63% globally. Uh, our company size around 476 million euros and we expecting to have 580 million soon. So what is Drive um, AHT? It is innovation. Innovation as a basis for AHT growth uh, from all this year. So innovation with um, not just only innovation, we have 
also our expertise team to have our commitment and also effort to provide cooling solution which matter and make it a difference. So of course, by focusing on ecological and also economic aspect on people and environment. Let's uh, looking at this. So since 1995, AHC uh, starting to be a pioneer in the field research and development for uh, sustainable refrigerant, which we therefore rely on R290. And until today, we AHC is the only global player in the incomplete R290 range of products. Um, AHC has been using R290 successfully since 2005. And until today, we, are, we have produced 2 million units of refrigerant R290 for customer worldwide. Why we finally working with um, R290? As is the two characteristics that make a significant contribute. Firstly, it's a high efficiency, energy efficiency. And if you compare directly the comparison with the R502, or this one is replacement for R22, and also uh, for R134A, uh, energy saving at least 9%, or maximum to 30%, it depends on how, how the usage. So secondly, it's a natural refrigerant. So there is no harmful for also layer and also has a G, very low GWP value of three. So compared to R22 is 1,760 and R404, the GWP of 3,944. So this is a massive uh, CO2 equivalent saving and therefore it's very low greenhouse effects. So let's look at the um, um, basic information for the groundbreaking product that we are now coming to. After this being successful for um, plug-in, horizontal plug-in, we also has launched again our game changer with the first semi-plug-in multi-deck for shielding for even the type of uh, air cool system and also with the water loop system, which we are contributing here with the R290 water loop system that we would like to share and also getting um, all the information uh, worldwide to contribute to this. Now you going to see some benefit of R290 that we actually experience of. So here is the benefit that you can see. You if you compare the refrigerant of a remote of R290 or any others compared to the R290 for water vento, uh, vento water loop with R290, you can see the very low refrigerant charge in the system. 95% reduced from the traditional remote system. See, if you're looking at this the two on the right side, the two picture comparison, you can see that how uh, complicated of the remote system, conventional remote system, that the longer the pipe you have, the more risk on the, the leakage it becomes. And you're looking at the AHT plug-in system, you have, um, the multi-deck unit here, and you have the water system here for a glycol or water glycol mixture, um, propylene glycol mixture. So just to take the heat out of the store and connect it to the compact pump station with a dry, dry cooler out here. And for the plug-in, Island Freezer is already become a plug-in, which has been already worldwide uh, providing by AHG. So this is a complication of the system that we, we try to replace this uh, with the water loop system with R290. The leakage rate that actually has a lot of impact, you can see that um, for the study from the German Federal Environment Ministry in 2010, 
the remote traditional remote system, the leakage rate is as high as 15% compared to the AHG Vento SAP, meaning the semi plug in water loop, we have less than 1%. So this is already, you can see that a huge amount that you can actually saving for CO2 emission if there is the leakage this high. So let's assume for, um, this is just only to make you see quantify. Uh, let's say the whole uh, AHC water loop system with R290 uh, with a 50 meter linear length, you can see that the AHT water loop system, the e, uh, CO2 emission in, in one year, this much, 0 0.0013 per, uh, kilogram, compared to R404, 27,162. So this actually uh, been proven of the, um, we actually calculating with the only 3.38% for the leakage rate for this page, this information. So basically, um, AHT, water loop system with R290, we has more than 99.9% .9 lower CO2 emission than the others, uh, R404 or R314A or R744. Uh, seven four, seven four four. So let's look at the um, uh, case study um, for SWIFT. It's a um, um, supermarket change uh, here in the case study in Brazil. They have been changing to uh, AHG system, the whole uh, from remote, traditional remote to AHG system plug-in system with the R290. This is here, what is the result? The refrigerant uh, charging reduced 82% uh, reduction and energy consumption, they can have it minus 56% saving. And also the KV, they save minus 65%, 65% uh, meaning saving of 4,300, I'm oh, sorry, 435,000 kilogram of CO2 in one year. So just to make it very um, quantified for this, uh, how, how much is the 4,435 uh, 4, ton? It's uh, approximately 79,015 homes usage of electricity. This is what um, the saving that uh, this project has been. So, and this one we are proudly present because this is the first uh, water loop system, CO, uh, R290, in the country, in Philippines, loyal duty free and done by Cofront Technologies Asia, our partner in Philippines. And not only the first store, uh, not only the first R290 water loop in Philippines, but actually in Southeast Asia. So be happy about it. You are the first one. So look at the um, total cost operating cost in comparison. We do the calculating by doing the energy consumption. We taking a look, take a look at the service and maintenance cost. And we also uh, looking at the refrigeration chart and cost that going to go up uh, when you are phasing out of those um, HFC refrigerant. So the, um, the saving, we have compared to the uh, R290 water loop system, we have 62% um, saving for operating costs of the R290 compared to the remote uh, R404. Yeah, and for this, the left, the red color here is a 74% compared to the R. 290 if you compare with the plug-in system with R404. So um, our the partner will present a bit later about this uh, project. And the last message that I would like to, uh, to mention here to take away is that propane has a lower GWP than previous assumed now. 
and the latest IPCC 6 report. GWP equivalent to uh, right now for 20 years, they are actually only 0 0.072 for 20 years value and only seven, uh, only 0 0.02 for 100 years. Before that, we have 100 years for GWP was assumed as three. So this is a new significant that R290, the global GWP uh, value is a lot lower than compared to the CO2 equivalent to one. So now we are, that's why we would like to confirm that R290 is one of the option of the range for the um, natural refrigerants and it can be also sustainable and also the energy efficiency is possible with R290. So sustainability mindset, how to make better air. We breathe. Thank you very much, uh, Sumitra. Very nice presentation. And again, very happy to be working with you and the uh, AHT group uh, you know, on, on these technologies. I have one question for you before we uh, pass on to, an, an, to our next speaker. AHT has been involved with hydrocarbons for uh, close to 20 years by now, if, if I'm correct. You, as you said, you are represented in over 100, company, uh, 100 countries. And you have, of course, both the plug-in solutions and uh, since a couple of years back, also the water loop. Can you, uh, can you comment a little bit on what is the progress in Asia in comparison with Europe and states after the IEC approval of the higher charge? Do you see more opportunities in Asia? Is Asia equally, uh, you know, uh, is, is the up uptake of the hydrocarbon solution in Asia accelerating uh, to your knowledge? I mean, we know that even in Japan, Daikin has announced the AHT branded technology to be uh, a Daikin branded AHT technology to be available in Japanese markets. So a lot of progress in, in several fronts, but can you please give us your, your take on the Asian market as of today, the opportunities for hydrocarbons? Thank you. Yes. Um, for, uh, okay, I hear an echo, but anyway, yes, uh, for R290 in Asia, it's starting to uh, picking up uh, in all the countries, starting to see the benefit of the R290. And because of the technology is still quite, um, um, the investment cost for the moment is still quite uh, sometime, uh, high. That's why they need some support. Uh, anyhow, for just want to, to, to say that even in, the, in Southeast Asia, a lot of uh, fun and also helping supporting fun in the market also available right now. For now we can see the future that R290 will be the future mm -hmm. for the, Asia country, especially it's not, uh, it can work with any climate, not just on, especially for hot climate, it's also available for, uh, it's also suitable for this Asia market also. We can see that it's growing very, very far, I, we can see, yes. Thank you very much. We, we, we look forward to really see, you know, the hydrocarbon technology to be deployed in, in all countries of Southeast Asia and hopefully the, the coach innovation hub and our activities around this uh, will, will help to stimulate this, uh, this demand further. Thank you very much, Sumitra. Uh, and we are now ready to uh, go to our next speaker. Unfortunately, the representative from Kerry Transicult could not join us today. So we will, uh, we will have them uh, talking about their contribution on one of the next webinars. Uh, with this, I would like to welcome our next speaker, uh, next speaker Mr. Bong Cruz, who is representing the Central Group. Uh, Mr. Bong, uh, the virtual stage is yours. Thank you, thank you, Jan. Uh, let me just adjust my... Make some adjustments in my settings. Take your time. We can see your screen okay. already. Okay. Very good. Okay, so we have, we call this project our R290 project uh, using a Suzuki carry ref van. So the UB platform or the platform of the small light vehicle, utility vehicle, is a Suzuki carry. And the ref van body would be by called Cooltech uh, from the C from Central Nippon Fru of Cooltech Inc. Our company is a joint venture between leading truck bodybuilder center in the Philippines and leading truck bodybuilder in Japan, Nippon Fruhoff, the inventor of the wing vans. So we fully support this project because this project is uh, environmentally friendly and uh, our products, we have made sure also that our products would also be environmentally friendly. So we're looking at the same objective of really seeing to it that we all contribute uh, to environmental protection. So, we, so in our choice of, uh, of uh, material, 
we have, instead of using the usual uh, fiberglass reinforced plastic or fiberglass, we're using aluminum, bad, aluminum panels for our body. As we all know, uh, aluminum is uh, fully recyclable. So it can be recycled. And then in the process of our uh, producing our extruded polystyrene insulating material, uh, the foaming agent that we use is very ozone friendly as approved by Nippon Pro of Japan. So those two components would uh, signify that really that we are, we are uh, serious in our environmental protection and advocacy by choosing the, in, by choosing the environment, environment friendly materials as well. So this is the, uh, the design for the cool tech refund body that we will, that we will use for the Suzuki carry. And this is the platform that we're going to use. It's a Suzuki carry. I say small utility vehicle. And then if you install the uh, ref band, it would look something like this, the dimensions. And uh, the final product would be something like this. So in closing, I'd like to show you, uh, to introduce to you our company, get to know our company better through this audiovisual presentation. Have you heard of the new ref band manufacturer in the Philippines? And Big Belisario, and today, ipapakita ko sa inyo ang aming bagong planta, ang Centro Nippon Fruha Kultek Inc. or CFCI. This is our newest joint venture with two of the leading truck body manufacturers in the industry, Nippon Fruha Company Limited of Japan, and Kruhof Mahajak Company Limited of Thailand, where we are the majority shareholder. Ang partnership natin with Nippon Kruhof actually started in 2016 with the exclusive distributorship of wing group van bodies. Ang CFCI ay binigyan ng pioneering status ng Board of Investment and verified by the Department of Science and Technology as the first local company to manufacture insulated sandwich panels and temperature-controlled band bodies in the Philippines. This is our CFCI manufacturing plant with our high-tech equipment, from our uncoiler machines to our insulated sandwich panel processes. For our exterior panel, we are using coated aluminum sheet which has better surface appearance and flexibility. Lightweight din siya and 100% recyclable. Ang ginagamit nating insulation ay XPS, extruded polystyrene foam which has lower thermal conductivity at water absorption and best of all, environment friendly. This is where it all comes together. Matapos mabuo ang iba't ibang body parts, dito ina-assemble ang ating Kultec ref band body. For safety and convenience during our body mounting process, gumagamit kami ng overhead train. One of the outstanding features of our Kultec ref band is the nine ski locks na kaya i-operate ng isang kamay. Dahil locally manufactured, meron tayong capacity and competency to do customized specifications with faster delivery schedule. The only refrigerated van body in the Philippines with Japan quality standards and environment-friendly. Kultec Ref Band. For more information, visit our Facebook page at Kultec Ref Band and our official website at www.kultecrefband.com. That would be all. Thank you very much, Jan and Devin. Thank you. Hello, uh, Bong. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, you know, we had we had you joining us for our um, last technical training workshop where you, where you spoke about the, the refrigerated van bodies um, for transport refrigeration. 
Um, one question that I have for you uh, just very quickly before we move to our next speaker is, you spoke a little bit about the, the market, the, the, the sector, the transport, refrigerated transport sector in the Philippines in our, in our last webinar. And I wanted to ask you again, where, where do you see the biggest need? What is the biggest, um, where's the biggest need for improvement of the trans refrigerated transport sector in the Philippines today uh, from, from your perspective? From our perspective and based on our studies, uh, Devin, the uh, right now uh, the uh, ref bonds are needed as transport solutions in two aspects the first mile delivery meaning from the farm to the uh, to the manufacturing facilities to eliminate the middlemen and then finally from the factories to our to the to the stores the, so that's the last mile delivery on those two areas the first mile and the last mile we see really a need there for refrigerated vans to, in order to protect the quality of the products, of the food, and of course, to reduce the, uh, the overall cost of, uh, of the food uh, until it gets to your table. Yes, so I mean, this will help minimize food waste, but it also help reduce food costs as well, and also food safety. Yes, Devin. That's right. Okay, thank you very much um, for your presentation, Bong. Um, please stick around in case we have any questions. Um, we'll make sure to forward them to you. But for now, let me move on to our next speaker. Um, Emilio Gonzalez Lauf uh, is joining us um, today from Cold Front Technologies Asia um, to talk about how they're contributing their knowledge, their expertise, and their experience working with um, sustainable refrigeration technologies for the food cold chain in the Philippines for many, many years now. Emilio, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Thanks, Devin. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very well. Thanks again for joining us. And uh, please sure. go ahead and, uh, and, and take, take over uh, the screen. We're, we're looking forward yeah. to your presentation. Go ahead and present this. Perfect, thank you. All right, so uh, thanks, Devin. Thank you very much for inviting us to speak today uh, in terms of our contribution and partnership with you on the Cold Chain Innovation Hub. So um, a little bit about Cold Front. Uh, Cold Front Technologies is a company that my wife and I started in 2016, um, uh, really for, uh, for the whole cold chain innovation, everything from industrial all the way to commercial refrigeration. Uh, we work very closely with AHT in terms of implementing their projects here in the Philippines, as Sumitra already mentioned, uh, not only their island freezers, but as well as um, their water loop solution. Uh, the tag or our saying at Cold Front is where innovation meets solution. And that's one of the reasons we're so excited to partner with you is uh, these systems or these green refrigerants, we really do believe are something that's commercially viable today and something that's easily implemented. So it really fits in with our um, model and what we want to achieve in the industry. A little bit about myself. Um, this is kind of my background and uh, I lived in the States most of my life. I'm not really gonna go through my background. You guys can read it on the screen if you like. I think the only thing I would like to point out from this slide is I don't have any refrigeration experience. Uh, both my wife and I do not. I believe that to be a positive thing. Uh, um, why we got into the industry is, a, is probably a story for another time. We do have a lot of industry veterans who work in the company who have decades of experience. But I think by not necessarily have a traditional refrigeration background, my wife and I are both very open with two new te technologies and new green refrigerants. We really think that's where the industry is going. So we're all very open to working and trying out brand new technologies such as CO2, such as R290, uh, VFDs or, uh, as well, and, and water loop systems and really seeing how we can move the industry forward in, in terms of not only uh, a greener future, but also to a uh, less uh, energy usage uh, model. So some highlights about Cold Front. So a couple of things uh, we're very, very proud of working with AHT. One is, I think we were one of the first, if not the first to install uh, plug-in R290 systems in the Philippines. Uh, that's both with AHT Sydney and Paris models. We've installed quite a few of those systems already. And as Sumitra mentioned earlier, we also installed the very first, and I believe up to date, only R290 water, full R290 water loop system here in the Philippines. Uh, I think Sumitra already gave you a little bit of the background in terms of uh, some case studies of the, of the store itself. Uh, only thing I really wanna add to that is that 
um, uh, the, a lot of the information that we're presenting are, are calculated basically based on the energy usage, stated energy usage. But what I'd like to say is we are partnering with CCI Hub now and Royal Duty Free to are actually taking daily readings of the actual energy usage of the store and look forward to presenting to you actual data in the not so distant future in one of the upcoming technical forums. So uh, again, I mentioned uh, we we're the first to install a water loop system or R290 water loop system here in the Philippines. Uh, I think we've had, we also have the most R2, our most water loop installations in the Philippines with five stores to date. Um, and um, we're very proud, uh, as Sumitra mentioned, not only were we the first in the Philippines, but one of the first in Southeast Asia to wa uh, install water loop, R290 water loop. And um, even prouder that we actually are, because of being able to have the experience of doing this, being to help both uh, Japan and Cambodia install their first, or uh, one of the first water loop systems. So um, I, I guess, you know, in, usually Philippines is, is uh, lags these other Southeast Asian countries in terms of technology. So I think uh, we're very, very, very proud of the fact that we're leading in this uh, area. So, so why did we want? Why do we want to contribute? Why do we want to participate to the CCI Hub? Uh, first, of, first and foremost, it's environmentally friendly. As Sumika already said, both R290 CO2 has very low uh, GWP, has no ozone depletions. So I think that's a very um, that alone is a very um, strong reason for us to want to be part of this. Uh, based on our background in the states uh, in uh, Silicon Valley, uh, everything that we've done in the past and what we wanted to bring here to the Philippines really has to have an environmental impact. And I, I think by working with these green refrigerants and some of the other things such as water loop technology, variable frequency drive, we can really start to move the needle. The other reason and I, why we are so excited about this uh, technology is economic benefits, right? Besides being green, uh, there's real tangible benefits to the end user. Uh, as we said, 25, 30% less energy usage. Some cases you see that a lot more. Uh, some compared to some of the older systems, we're seeing about 50% energy usage uh, reduction. Uh, these systems have a longer life uh, because our, the compressors are not working so hard and the refrigerants are so efficient. We see these systems lasting uh, eight to 10 years versus or 10 to 12 years versus six to nine years. So we're seeing a lot longer life. And also we see a lot uh, lower in, uh, maintenance cost as well in the neighborhood of 30 to 50%. So what a loop and R290, we see that as the perfect combination. Again, uh, very low maintenance. Uh, it, there's no heat inside the store, uh, requires minimal piping. Uh, there's no machine room needed, 80% uh, re uh, reduction in refrigerant load. As Sumitra mentioned, 97% reduction in re refrigerant leakage and 25% more energy efficient. So in closing, um, i just like to say Coldrunt is uh, very proud to partner with the CCI Hub, with HT and with other per uh, participants to promote green refrigerants. And we're also very excited to lend our expertise and experience on water loop technology as uh, the hub uh, develops and starts uh, promoting these technologies and providing training sessions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Emilio. Uh, please stay with us for, uh, we will have a, just a you know, short one question. Just listening to your presentation, can you please give us an update on how many of the plugin R290 showcases have you installed? Southern Philippines, due date across the, the various projects? Uh, I think across the various projects, we are coming on, I don't have the exact number off at the top of my head, but I think about 80 to 100 units. That's, that's very impressive. That's very impressive. Given that Japan is you know, not, not much uh, more ahead of the Philippines. Uh, so I think that's that. I hope that we have a number of uh, people from, from Japan as well listening. Uh, hopefully, that will increase uh, the, the, you know, the 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 effort that is needed to introduce more of these technologies here as well uh, very well done you have been involved in a number of projects across the board and, and moreover your interest is from basically covering all the natural refrigerants 
we have we had a number of, of discussions over the last two years and if it's not traps you always show interest so so we really appreciate it and, and very happy to have you on board uh, final question how do you how do you assess the the readiness on philip of philippines for the r290 technology uh, as of now in comparison let's say two years ago what has changed uh i think they're very ready we're, we're quite surprised um two years ago uh, leading into the pandemic uh, we had to present uh, a lot of this technology to customers explain what r290 is to them and try to really sell what this technology uh, what are the benefits of this technology during the lockdown and i think with uh, cost going up operating costs going up and also um, being such a high uh, cost of energy here in the Philippines, which unfortunately is still going up, we see that uh, reversing. We're actually fielding calls from a lot of clients right now going, R290, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but we've heard about it, can you explain it? Or right out, uh, or sometimes the store will even call us and say, can you, get, do you provide R290 system? So instead of us kind of trying to get people to buy into it, we're getting a lot more requests at this point for for, um, for R290. So I think this uh, trend is continuing. I think it's going to continue to grow. Very good, very good. Uh, it, it just makes perfect sense on the side of efficiency, uh, on the side of initial cost, and of course the environmental aspect. It, it, it's hard to beat, uh, in, in fact, when we see the numbers presented already uh, just today. Emilio, thank you very much. Uh, we will continue the Q&A uh, after uh, all presenters are, are done. Uh, so please stay with us, and thank you again for your presentation today. All right, thank you. With that, I would like uh, to ask our next speaker from Embraco Nidek, uh, Mr. Shubo, to talk about uh, another R290 solution. So uh, if you can hear us, please join us. And you can start with sharing your screen and your slides as well, please. Hey, thanks. Thanks, yeah. Excellent. We can see your screen very well. Thank you. OK, thanks. Hi everybody. Uh, this is Shubo from uh, Nidak, Nidak GA and Braco. So uh, now I will uh, present uh, this Braco R290 plug and code solution for everybody. First of all, uh, I will give you a simple introduction for Braco. Uh, now, I think most of the people already heard Embraco brand before, yeah? And now we belong to uh, one part of uh, NIDA corporate. Uh, Embraco, we started the business from uh, uh, 1971. We already have uh, more than 50 years history. Now we are the uh, global provider of uh, refrigeration technology uh, inside the domestic and the commercial culture. And we have a uh, full of uh, product portfolio uh, for the household, uh, food service, food retail, merchandiser, and the special applications. And uh, here, next page, I will introduce something related to the, the gas. Yeah. Now, uh, inside most of the market inside Southeast Asia, there's a lot of customers still using HFC. Yeah. But uh, the problem is uh, uh, they are not uh, friendly for the environment. And now when we go to the low GWT uh, solution, I mean, with uh, HFC solution, uh, normally we can find some uh, some gas inside the Japan, for example, uh, like uh, uh, HFO 1, 2, 3, 4, YF, yeah, this kind of solution. It's a A2L uh, safety class, it's middly flammable, yeah. And uh, the problem is the cost is very high. Yeah. Then we can go to the uh, hydrocarbon. Yeah. When we go to the hydrocarbon, we can see uh, all, the, uh, all the parameters can be improved. This is why in Braco, we, pro uh, we promote R290 strongly inside the market, and we publish a lot of product based on that. Uh, here you can see, for example, for the cost, for the uh, uh, for the efficiency, everything uh, is much better uh, than the low GWP HFC uh, gas solution. Here, we also can show some comparison for the uh, uh, hydrocarbon solution and the other gas solution. Yeah, here if you see the 
uh, uh, the information related to the R R290, I mean the blue colors, you can see R290 have a very good uh, efficiency um, uh, result compared with the other gas. And also for the uh, thermal parameters, R290 also shows a very strong uh, activities during the uh, during the running. So uh, Umbraco, we really strong uh, suggest all the users, all the customers, try to use R290 compressors uh, for your system. Here, uh, it's introduced uh, uh, some trend uh, of the hydrocarbons inside all of the world. The left part shows what happening inside the, the major market like Europe and the US market. Yeah. For example, now for the household uh, refrigerators, now most of them already been R600A. Yeah. And uh, the second point is uh, for the large food and beverage brands already changed to uh, hydrocarbon, for example, like uh, Unilever. Yeah. Uh, they, they moved to hydrocarbon uh, long time start a long time before yeah and now most of their portfolio already be hydrocarbon the third part is um, uh, uh, now inside uh, europe and the us their regulation already uh, set very strong uh, limitation for the hfc and uh, uh, try to push all the market to go to the hydrocarbon yeah and uh, also for the uh, certification and for the supply chain everything uh, inside Europe and the US, they are ready for hydrocarbon, yeah. And here in the right part, you can see the status and the trend inside Southeast Asia. And now uh, for the household market, uh, most of the uh, countries inside the Southeast Asia, they are using R600A. So it means even uh, some uh, like R290 is a flammable, but in fact, inside our market, uh, most of the people and most of the manufacturers, they have enough ability and the technology to make the production and the use be safe. Yeah. In the second part, uh, for the beverage and ice cream brand, they already dropped to uh, hydrocarbon. Yeah. Now we already, uh, I mean, Embraco, we already have several customers inside the Southeast Asia. They already start uh, uh, mass production for R290 uh, system, especially for the ice cream system. Uh, the third part is uh, 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 import of cabinets from Europe and China. Uh, uh, because inside the, those of uh, countries, R290 already uh, very popular. Uh, so when uh, inside Southeast Asia, the country or the buyer, when they import the system, most of them already changed to R290 already, yeah. Here, the problem is, uh, I mean, some things we need to improve inside Southeast Asia is uh, uh, one thing is the uh, uh, spare parts and aftermarket maintenance. This kind of skills uh, we need. To improve for the uh, for the worker, and also uh, we need to uh, enhance the education, yeah, and the certifications for the technicians. For this part, uh, Embarco also we are uh, supporting our partners inside Southeast Asia to improve those points to give more training. And here, uh, related to the R290, Embarco, uh, we also publish one new solution, uh, we call it plug and cool, yeah. Here, from, from this page, you can see what's plug and cool, yeah. It in, before, you know, uh, Embraco, we just produce uh, compressor itself, but this time we provide this kind of uh, uh, solution. I mean, uh, uh, if you buy plug and cool, it means you have almost everything for your system. Uh, and here, also, this plug and cool, we have two cooling type. One is air cooling, another is water cooling. And here is one real example uh, inside our customers. The, they use our plug and cool system for their uh, showcase uh, inside their supermarket. They just install our 
plug and cool system on the top of their system. So it's a very good uh, solution because before they uh, invest a uh, big money to have a, a station, yeah, working station. And uh, uh, compare with that, now if they use an Embraco plug and cool solution, uh, they can save a lot of cost. And uh, also they don't need to hire some workers to make the, the routine um, uh, maintenance. Yeah, maintains. So uh, they can save a lot of cost from both sides. Here is a summarized page uh, for the uh, plug and cool solution. First, uh, they can accelerate uh, the installation process in 70%. And also they can save their energy, yeah? Because inside Embraco uh, plug and cool solution, we use inverter R290 compressor. So uh, they can save a lot of energy. And also uh, the third part, uh, we have uh, modular design, yeah? Uh, so from the last page, you can see, you can define how many plug and cools system you use, yeah? you can just uh, 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 purchasing the quantity based on the size of your system. Yeah. And the, the final point is a low GWP solution, yeah, because uh, and this solution, we use R290 gas. Yeah, so it's uh, very uh, friendly uh, for the environment. Okay, so um, that, that's the uh, presentation for the Embraco plug and cool. Uh, if you uh, want to uh, uh, get more information, you can visit our website, embraco.com, or you can send email uh, to me. Yeah, and here you can find my email address. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you very much, Mr. Shubo. Uh, very interesting presentation. I have a technical question about your solution. Uh, okay. The plug-in cool unit can be integrated uh, at the showcase, right? Usually you place it on the top of it. Now, this is, this is applicable to both uh, a new showcase as well as the uh, existing kind of retrofit. Can you, for instance, you have a remote type uh, 404 showcase that is five to six years old. Can you convert the existing uh, remote type showcase as well as uh, a new showcase? What would be your advice there? And do you have any guideline for the contractors or uh, even the other operators to, to, to conduct this conversion? Well, well based on my personal uh, knowledge, uh, Embraco Plug and Co is very easy to be used. Yeah, the most important is the, the, uh, the size. I mean, the dimensions of the customer's application. If they have uh, enough space, uh, it's very easy uh, to change, to replace. For example, before they use R404 and now they change to R290. It's very easy because uh, our R290 plug and code is the sealed unit. Yeah, uh, as the picture shows, yeah. I mean, uh, the workers or the designer, they just um, uh, need to measure the top I mean, the, the, the dimension on the top of the system. If they can match the size of uh, Embraco plug and cool, um, it's really easy uh, to, to assemble and to, um, to replace the, the old system. So it's really easy. Thank you, thank you. This might be a little bit silly uh, comment from my side, but I have literally just completed installing kitchen in my own place. And while you are installing the appliances, it, you, you get some kind of uh, a manual how to install that exactly tells you this kind of opening you need to cut open in that you know worktop on the on the kitchen, etc. So, is there some kind of a guideline that is available similar to installing other appliances to make it easier for the contractors that are to conduct such operation? Oh, well, uh, I think if uh, we go to the very detailed technical question, I, I think it's better. Uh, our uh, Embraco uh, professional technical support engineer to give you more solutions. Uh, okay, I'm sure, I, I'm sure there is some such such model available. So thank you very much for this, and we are now ready to uh, move on to our next speaker, Mr. Roberto okay. from the uh, EPTA ER uh, technology uh, representative. So uh, please, Roberto, uh, join us here live, and you can also start with sharing your screen. Okay. Thank you very yes. much. Hello, Thank Roberto. You. Good to see you again. Okay, so let me.
So the green button uh, on the bottom screen and then the share, uh, the, the screen should be uh, visible to everyone. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Roberto Pra. I'm a sales uh, export manager in uh, ERP Asia, which is part of EPTA Group. Uh, I'm also a uh, research media appointed as a uh, uh, product manager. So let's go quickly with the presentation. So here, just uh, uh, I'd like to move up. So uh, I'd like to uh, just introduce uh, the company. Uh, EPTA Group is a multinational uh, company specializing in commercial refrigeration for retail or food and beverage. Of course, uh, with the, its ongoing vocation for growth and its competitive drive, it has acquired some of this uh, sector most important recognized brand, expanding both in uh, its presence uh, geographically and in numerous business areas. So here you can see with the, this graphic uh, uh, representation, the timeline, we start in 86 uh, with the acquisition of Costa in Italy, Costa is a company anyway that is back and was being founded, founded in the 46. Uh, and then uh, you can see a, a very important other acquisition like in France with the Bonnet Neve. And I'd like to point out uh, King Richard in 2017. So we land also now in, uh, in the Philippines. Uh, I'd like to mention also Kaiser Warren uh, that the acquisition in the United States. So basically we are uh, present almost on every uh, continent. Uh, in terms of brand, IRP, Eurocry, Euromisa are so-called specialistic brands. Uh, IRP is uh, focused on uh, food and beverage with the plugins unit. Eurocry is a customized uh, uh, manufacturer of mainly uh, servovers, Misa, cold rolls. And the other brand are uh, focusing in uh, um, food and retail. So some figures, uh, uh, we are reaching almost uh, the billion of euros uh, in terms of turnover, 11 uh, uh, manufacturing uh, uh, sites uh, around the world. In Asia, we have in Thailand uh, and the one in uh, Qingdao. Uh, headquarters uh, is in Milan. Then, uh, in terms of sustainability, uh, EPTA definitely is uh, one of the major uh, priorities. So after desire to practice sustainability with an authentic sense of responsibility is put into concrete form in an environmental protection strategy, a commitment that is reflected in every project and research and in the production process, from the design and development of the product up to the end of its service life. Fundamental premise of putting this logic into action is the quantification and the certification of the potential environmental impact of the product and processes, which the group has accomplished by adopting the LCA, Life Cycle Assessment Method. EPTA Sustainable Evolution includes the introduction of simple and ingenious natural refrigerant innovation on the market. The group promoted the adoption of natural refrigerant for all the surface, ranging from a plug-in, integral, air-cooled, water-cooled, and CO2 solution to cover most efficiently and optimally any store dimension in any climate condition. 100% of ETA brand remote cabinet and already are already available with the CO2 and all the plugin and integral cabinet are available with R290 or other gases with low GW. As a confirmation of ETA sustainable approach, the group has been included into the mitigation area of the European Union, the LIFE 17 program. With this project, LIFE C4R, Carbon for Retail Refrigeration. Conclusion, let me remark that EPTA is implementing the use of renewable energy in all its production facility, normally with a, a kind of, for example, a, a solar panels. EPTA is also promoting the use of recycled and recyclable material on its product, including packaging. So here you have a representation of some uh, pilot tests that we've done uh, in Europe, or mainly in Italy, and you can see how remarkable is the saving uh, that here we have represented the uh, with uh, some, uh, I mean, household equipment, uh, like a washing machine, iron, and uh, dryers. So let's focus now on, uh, on hydrocarbon gases. Uh, and here is the list of what we consider the more uh, beneficial effect of uh, the introduction of these gases. Hydrocarbon, as we know, has a zero OGP, so ozone depletion potential, and, and almost zero GWP. Hydrocarbon has an equal or a better heat transfer performance and a lower pressure drop compared to its predecessor. 
Hydrocarbon has a better combination with mineral oil, both in the liquid form and the vapor form. This can help to avoid the use of synthetic oils. Anyway, they are compatible with mineral oil, synthetic uh, alkylates, and the polyol ester lubricant. Hydrocarbon are now substantially less expensive than uh, other HFC gases uh, due to the cheaper production process and raw material sourcing, but also the fact that the HFC now the price definitely has been increased. A refrigeration system designed uh, for hydrocarbon, we need 50-60% less refrigerant by mass when, of course, charged with hydrocarbon. And this definitely is impacting the life of the equipment. Because of the lower pressure level, hydrocarbon compressor run more quietly than a comparable, for example, r one t 4 In conclusion, the cooling capacity of hydrocarbon gases and then the energy efficiency of hydrocarbon units is definitely better uh, than a comparable HFC units, which means uh, at the end, uh, a lower energy consumption. So this is uh, some of the environmental awards that uh, we have been granted during the years. I will not go into details. And then uh, let's talk about the uh, cabinet that we choose to represent here, EPTA. So one of them is the Glee 45 R290, is an upright freezer, manufactured both in Thailand and also in uh, uh, Europe. So here, uh, the technical specification, I'd like just to remark a couple of things, uh, the class, uh, the class seven. So this is a cabinet tropicalizer capable to uh, run uh, in a very challenging uh, uh, environmental uh, uh, situation with an uh, ambient temperature of 35 degrees Celsius and a relative humidity of 75%. And the product class, the product class is L1, uh, but actually this is, has been designed for ice cream. Uh, so the industry obliges us to go even uh, lower in terms of temperature. So we can grant a minus 18 degree, and this is the temperature of the core of the product. Actually, the warmest product is usually at the center of the cabinet near the glass. So the temperature cannot be uh, higher than minus 18. Okay, and uh, all of this, uh, this is a, a remarkable uh, performance we are able to achieve even a, a very important energy consumption. You can see as 8.5 kilowatt hour in 24 hours. So how we can reach this type of uh, uh, remarkable performance? Uh, back then, definitely with a technical milestone. We already discussed about R290 and R600 gases, and we'll not spend uh, more time on that. The free maintenance pilot condenser, this is definitely impact in the uh, maintenance cost, and we will see uh, this later. Internal piping, this is also a new modification that we have done in, on our cabinet, we use uh, the heat exchanger on the pipes. Hot gas defroster, this is very common, but definitely is uh, giving us a good uh, help, especially in safety, but also in energy consumption. LED, LED uh, they helps a lot to reduce consumption, to increase the life uh, of the cabinet. Uh, so the 50,000 hours are roughly of average uh, time life. LED also are very good uh, in uh, freezer application uh, because they are not affected like the fluorescent uh, by the temperature inside the cabinet. And safety is a low voltage uh, cabin, uh, low voltage uh, light. Uh, so then, uh, as you know, the uh, R290 tend to uh, collect at the lower part of the cabinet. So definitely if you have a spark at this area, that uh, is uh, not safe. So with LED lights being at 12, 24 volt, uh, this type of risk is excluded. Low E glass, this is very important help. Uh, this is, for example, in this cabinet, you can see here is a three layer glass heated with argon and uh, also with a three level, three uh, layer of uh, low emissivity, uh, pyrolytic and magnetronic. ECM fans, that, that, that those are helping us uh, in order to reduce the consumption, to increase the life of the, of the component, uh, which is also like uh, the LED, uh, roughly 50,000 hours. Uh, and also in terms of safety, because uh, they are brushless. So there is no chance of sparks. And in our case, uh, they are all uh, ATEX approved. Digital thermostat, also with the thermostat, we can uh, increase, uh, uh, improve actually the, the energy saving because uh, now the new thermostat, uh, they allow 
to modulate the temperature according with the time of the day. For example, during night time, we can send the cabinet in a kind of a sleeping mode since the door is not open at that time. And definitely the inverter compressor. The inverter compressor is uh, something, let's say, a little bit new, but the, 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 the improvement in terms of energy consumption is definitely impressive. And you will see this one here on this chart. We started in 2010 because I'm focusing now on the cabinet uh, done in uh, IAP Asia. And we start uh, in 2009. So we introduced the Asia 45, which is the predecessor of this cabinet. And you will see that uh, you can see now that uh, there is an 11.8 uh, uh, kilowatt hour, 24 hour of this cabinet, and we reach in the uh, Glee 45 arc night with inverter even uh, below 7, 6.8. So let's go fast also on the uh, total uh, cost of ownership. Uh, here I represent around five years, and you will see the, uh, the cost uh, uh, has been drastically reduced from 3,500 euro to 1,800 euro. So it's uh, much more than uh, almost 50%. Okay, so then uh, we have uh, our uh, uh, also world type Matidec chiller, the own way three, uh, Eco Art 90. So let me also discuss about this cabinet in brief. Technical specification, we have uh, three sides, uh, 1.2 meter up to 2.5 meter. Uh, very important is the product class. So you see that is an uh, M1. Uh, M1 means that uh, the temperature of the product can vary between a minus one uh, to plus five. And actually, uh, this is quite a you know, recent innovation. We uh, are able now to offer also the M0. So minus one up to plus four. Uh, taking a minus two are more or less the same. So I will go quickly here. And uh, you can see that uh, the impact uh, in uh, energy consumption is uh, also very impressive. Uh, the green one is the on way uh, DG stand for uh, double glass. And if I compare with uh, the pre previous version, the on way two, uh, double glass version, you see that uh, we are talking about uh, cutting by 50% the consumption. And of course, uh, the total cost of ownership is also very remarkable. Then uh, safety compliance. The uh, HC refrigerant are A3 class, as I already mentioned, are dangerous gases because they are flammable, explosive, odorless, colorless, and heavier than the air. Yeah, that is true. So then uh, their uh, use is then strictly regulated by international institution. EPTA complies with this regulation and is one of the first commercial refrigerator manufacturers to widely adopt hydrocarbon gas in this fleet. With the IRP is about uh, 1992 that we start uh, uh, providing a hydrocarbon cabinet uh, to Unilever for ice cream. All EPTA uh, hydrocarbon molders are using gas charges below 150 grams, uh, waiting uh, for uh, uh, increasing the gas charge. Uh, in accordance with the safety European standard, the EN378, so then uh, they can be located in any occupied space, which is not a machinery or a special machinery room, without restriction. Our HC models are specifically designed to comply the, with the stricter safety international regulation. And this is thanks to the fact that we adopt hot gas defrost as a preferred solution, of course, wherever possible. Now there are also electric uh, um, heating elements, I mean, uh, that are ATEX approved. But in terms of trade off between the performance and cost, we rather prefer to use all gas wherever possible. ATEX approved solenoid valve and electronic controllers. LED light, I already mentioned, ECM motor fan, which is brush, uh, brushless, and we already discussed about this. Safety isolation transform is also something that we like to use in our equipment. Also to prevent, uh, to get our, the, the user to be electrocuted in case uh, of uh, damaged glass in case that they, by, by accident, uh, the user uh, break the glass. But also this can cause a spark. Uh, and in case of a combination of electrical uh, um, gas leakage and uh, a broken glass, this, this could lead to a uh, risk. So we prefer to use a safety isolation from our cabinet. And definitely all the plastic are flame retardant. 
maintenance. So beside the production, which is very, uh, uh, I mean, important and uh, a risky activity, uh, the maintenance of the gas circuit is the only moment where extra caution is required. So the gas circuit maintenance should be performed, of course, by EPA service network. And where it's not available, we are always very happy to train our distributors. Of course, along with the proper training, then we need uh, also to uh, provide uh, some tools. And here, for example, you will see lockering uh, equipment, pliers, uh, and the special tools. And this is at the end of some of our EPTA cabinets. All of them can be definitely provided with a refrigerant gas R290 or R600. So thank you for your time. Hello, Roberto. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, great. Thank you very much for your presentation. I saw at the very end all the different types of equipment that, um, that came up on the screen. Um, it made me curious. So, you know, R290 is really seeming like it's, it's, a, it's a really good solution for the Philippines, especially in the commercial food retail sector. We have so many different uh, choices, uh, just like we've seen with our, our previous presenters and with, with EPTA as well. Um, I'm curious, with the recent developments of the increase in charge size, does, does EPTA also have a plan uh, for increasing the types of equipment or the sizes of equipment that are using R290 in, in your lineup? Yes, definitely we are. We're waiting for the industry. And uh, also, especially we are waiting for uh, the ratification uh, between the different agencies of the different countries. Now, as far as I remember, I think it's Australia uh, as a set to use the, 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 the new limit is 500 grams. Uh, of course, uh, uh, as previously I said that, that uh, so far there are no restrictions in the location. Then with the new limit, uh, there, there are going to be some uh, uh, restriction in where the, the, the unit uh, with uh, a gas charge uh, over, uh, above uh, one, uh, 150 grams can be located. So then this is the, we are in there waiting for, uh, for further instruction, but definitely that is uh, the next step for the incoming years. Yeah, and you know, just for everybody that's watching now, we had a uh, webinar uh, with uh, regarding policy, policy developments in the Philippines. And yes, that is very much a topic that they are discussing currently, the development of standards, um, updating the Philippine national standards for this type of commercial refrigeration equipment, according to the latest developments uh, with the IEC uh, charge sizes. Um, also, the Department of Energy is very active in its uh, development of uh, energy policy, encouraging energy efficiency. So I think it's very uh, fitting that we have equipment suppliers such as yourselves offering this energy efficient equipment um, in a large uh, range of different types and sizes for different end users that are considering this. Um, and also we heard uh, recently that the Philippines is very close to ratifying uh, Kigali. So there is additional uh, incentive to uh, move towards okay. these, these types of technologies. So yeah, thanks again, uh, Roberto, for joining us and um, please Thank take you. care. Uh, yes, and so yes, we will quickly move on. Let, let, me, just, um, let me just do a quick recap here of uh, what we've um, discussed so far. You know, we had, um, we're talking about the, the food cold chain, obviously, and, and we're, we're not just talking about just one second of the food cold chain, um, you know, we, we are talking about transport, we're talking about commercial refrigeration, we're talking about um, logistics and even overseas transport with uh, different companies supplying their technology. So, you know, it's great to, to be hearing that there are so many different options available for the full range of equipment that's needed to uh, develop a sustainable food cold chain in the Philippines and that we have very dedicated uh, companies and manufacturers who are uh, pledging to contribute this technology to the cold chain innovation hub. So it's very great to um, have this. And let me just continue on our discussion. We don't have, unfortunately, a representative from Hussman uh, Panasonic to join us today who would have been talking about their CO2 uh, refrigeration technologies and their CO2 display cases, which is also another natural refrigerant technology with a lot of potential to help contribute to the sustainable development of the food cold chain in the Philippines. Um, but we do have with us uh, Product Blocks. Um, Philip, um, who is the CEO of Product Blocks, uh, thank you for joining us again early in the morning uh, for you. Um, how are you doing today? 
Well, it's not that early now, so it's 9.30, so it's all good. Uh, and yeah, than, uh, later than last time. Thanks for that. Um, let me just um, yeah, share everything. But thanks for the invitation so that once again, I can present what uh, we are gonna contribute and what we are doing as a company. So basically, I guess you can see everything that I'm showing now. And I'll just yes, go full mode, uh, still uh, still in the screen. So uh, it's sharing. Okay. So thank you guys for uh, having me again. Um, I'll just uh, go fast through what we are doing. Uh, I'm really happy that we have uh, basically uh, two companies that inspired us basically are motivated to go this way as a startup. So basically we have uh, Embraco I think Mr. Marek Zlichinski was the one that pushed us towards hydrocarbons. And on the other side, we have a, a, a AHT that is Austrian based uh, company uh, that was also pretty inspiring for us to go air to 90 here. So because we are product blocks is based in Austria and uh, we do know the colleagues from AHT uh, in Austria as well. So coming to, so having said that, uh, basically uh, what uh, we are doing is our vision is to provide the most reliable condition transport of sensible vital supplies, meaning temperature sensible goods everywhere in the world at zero emission operation. Um, having said that, um, I just want to move and uh, go through why we are trying to do that because a lot of food waste is uh, happening out there. Uh, because of uh, unreliable first and last mile transport. So in the cold chain. So it's really important to have the first and the last mile transport or even eliminate in between uh, all the transport. So you can direct uh, uh, provide the food from the field um, if you want to say to, to do so. And it, if it's feasible, of course. Um, then uh, talking to logistic companies uh, and uh, forwarders in the cold chain business, um, they say that 37% of them is that the last mile transport is the biggest risk here and uh, in particular in the pharmaceutical. Uh, and I can talk about, uh, if you want to say so, developed countries as Austria, that this is not according to the rules. Uh, and last but not least, we were talking about greenhouse and GVP emissions and stuff um, that around 30 million tons of, are generated from transport refrigeration. And there are new uh, studies that this is even uh, more. And um, coming forward, uh, I like these quotes from the template that uh, David provided us. And Jan is that um, what the UN uh, Executive Secretary uh, said, Ms. Figueres, that Either we will move uh, to a low carbon because of nature will force us or we'll be guided by policy. And this is unfortunately true because uh, the intrinsic uh, motivation from the um, companies uh, driven of course by other KPIs uh, and the social, social ecological impact is uh, unfortunately not there. But we want to distinguish ourselves and that's why uh, we are trying to do so. And uh, on, in Europe, coming from, as a European company from Europe, so this is what uh, pushed us as well. Uh, we are pushing the EFGAS of regulation, meaning that um, the EFGAS should go down. So all the HFCs, but also the HFOs, because they're producing also toxic uh, acids, or oh, the, the so-called TFOs. And on the other side, we have the engine emissions and the acoustic emissions that are, uh, once you come to the, uh, urban and suburban deliveries, uh, this plays a huge role and not only there. Um, yeah, user pains are thermal intrusion, intrusion. So basically nobody's talking about that, but the door openings are pretty huge pain uh, when it comes to uh, cold chain and logistics um, and also the high ambient temperature uh, in the outside. So when it comes to door openings, the problem is maybe not that much the temperature uh, deviations, but uh, when, when it comes to energy costs and uh, energy itself, uh, it's the moist air entering the cargo space. Um, yeah, then you have the cargo monitoring. I guess that later on, um, there will be a presentation on that as well uh, from our colleagues, then regulatory compliance of false failing equipment, human failure, and so on. Uh, and since we uh, designed our unit for electric first, 
meaning that uh, we are aiming uh, to address the niche market of electric vehicles. Um, that there it comes uh, the driving creates anxiety, then the battery life. So uh, meaning that we will have to take care about the battery as well and how we um, use the system uh, coupled to the battery. A huge problem is the cargo payload. So more than 60% of the vehicles are overloaded in Europe at least. And um, this means, and they're paying fines. So it's crazy then charging infrastructure and so on. Um, and we strongly believe that if we solve this issue on the electric vehicles, the other ones are looking fruits for us uh, basically. And that's how uh, we wanna uh, move uh, forward. So what is our solution? So, uh, I mean, we've heard a lot. So it's a zero emission temperature controlled solution for your not only electric fleet, but this is that we aim for. Um, then the refrigerant, it was always already said, which one we believe at least, and we I am happy that we are sharing the same vision and thoughts on that. So we want to go use, to use propane and to use uh, air 294 um, or not one, but we are using it uh, on the market. Um, then uh, what we still have here, uh, and this comes in terms of maintenance and monitoring uh, also safety, but also asset value is that we will have a virtual representation or uh, of the entire system, including the vehicle on top if, when it comes to electric one, uh, that is monitoring the entire asset and the system. So the performance, uh, the energy performance, uh, safety issues uh, and so on and so on. Meaning that uh, we can predict um, the performance and the behavior of the refrigeration unit when in operation. Um, yeah, our solution uh, is fully electric, fully hermetic. So we achieved uh, due to the, I mean, this is not like black magic, <laughs> is just coming out of the used uh, refrigerant there. Uh, for mobility purposes, we strongly believe that not only for mobility, but for mobility purposes that r 90 is the, the solution since it comes uh, out of the volumetric efficiency of the properties of uh, hydrocarbons and we achieved 35% weight decrease. And if you have the payload as a pain, uh, this weight decrease means a lot. Um, and of course, then we are future proof, meaning that uh, if we use propane, uh, no further um, legislation, uh, there will um, be an obstacle for us. And also the customers would not need to adapt on that. And on top, we, uh, due to our architecture and our operational strategies, we achieved an, uh, a 25%, 20 percent, sorry, uh, efficiency increase um, compared to the competitors uh, with a similar system. Um, yeah, global warming potential. So I'm not going to go in details on that. Um, basically, uh, where we stand. So it's just uh, due to the change uh, of the system and if we take the current solutions that are not electrically driven they are using uh, compressors that are electrically driven by the mechanical shaft so meaning that it's an, uh, a shaft compressor an open one where the leakages can go up to 20 percent per year and uh, having in mind the refrigerants that the competitors are using here um, this has a huge impact on uh, our one and only planet. Um, yeah, we've done all the uh, compatibilities and certification and compliance uh, that are required in Europe coming from uh, all the safety aspects um, and so on and so on. So all uh, successful. Um, basically we field test the system with an electric vehicle, uh, a Nissan one uh, in, that's our prototype uh, seeing, you can see here, uh, we've done a lot of tests also in our own climatic chamber out there, uh, also with partners on the streets uh, where they were delivering, some, as you can see here, foodstuffs. Um, yeah. What are the benefits of our solution? So, as I said before, payload uh, in last mile delivery is a crucial one when it comes also to uh, and consider the electric vehicles because they have an additional weight coming from the batteries, unfortunately. Um, then we have a digitalized solution, a fully hermetic system, 
And in the end of the day, by using our digital tools, we can really uh, predict, uh, of course, uh, in a confidentiality, and in confidentiality intervals, um, the asset rest value that you have installed on the vehicle. What are the next steps? Uh, the next steps is uh, jointly with the uh, other partners here uh, that are present today uh, at uh, our webinar is that we have a demonstration and pilot product project uh, with uh, our system and uh, with a vehicle with, that will be insulated by Centro. Uh, Coldfront will take care and um, monitor and help Centro to couple the propane unit with this vehicle and next electronics will install the monitor, cargo monitoring and temperature control system. So of course, uh, this will be uh, supported by and guided by training procedures and also uh, afterwards with a nice uh, dashboards and cockpits that will both uh, communicate the, car so the situation in the cargo space, but also uh, of the, at least for the transport refrigeration unit. And yeah, so I'll just finish my short presentation today uh, with the statement that we strongly believe that the most effective way and maybe the only one uh, to achieve the climate neutrality neutrality goals uh, in our sector at least uh, will lie in the quick reduction of dev gas by scaling up natural refrigerant solutions because they're available, they're technologically better than uh, the other ones and they're safe. So this would be from my side. Thank you uh, for the time slot that I got uh, here and uh, being able uh, to be part of the Cold Chain Innovation Hub Philippines. Thanks, it's Philip. And um, forward to answer them as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, if, if you could stick around, uh, we're going to have uh, one more presentation by the partner that you just mentioned um, earlier by uh, Nexty Electronics, who will be developing the Cold Chain Monitoring System for this uh, exciting pilot project that we are um, very excited and looking forward to getting this uh, put together to see the viability and the, and the potential, the big potential for this solution to be uh, a big contribution to the cold chain in, uh, sector in the Philippines. One quick question, um, you know, I noticed uh, that the uh, design of the unit, uh, all in black with the, with the, the grill, uh, was different from and new from what, what I haven't seen uh, from before. So I was just wondering, just curious, is that uh, actually what you're going with or is that? Yep. Uh, uh, this would be the final design for sure. Uh, because uh, what you've seen is our uh, zero series uh, unit. And basically this one will get a facelift soon and uh, will look like the one that you've seen before. Yeah, not only um, is it, does it you know, work economically, environmentally, but it uh, looks great too. So I think that's okay. probably gonna be it's hitting all three, all three areas. So yeah, thanks again, uh, Philip. Um, if you could stick around, um, thanks for your presentation. Uh, we're going to move on now to um, Miss April. A April, are, are you with us right now? Hello. Hi, April. Can you hear me? Hi. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. No, thanks. Uh, thanks for joining us, and, and thanks for sticking yeah. around. Uh, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to hearing uh, your presentation uh, from Nexty Electronics and a little bit more about what you guys do and uh, your contribution to the hub. So please go ahead and take it away. All right, so I'll just share my screen. All right, all right, this is CCI Hub and co-contributors and all attendees who are with us today. A pleasant afternoon to all of you. All right, so uh, my name is April and on behalf of Nexty Electronics, I will be talking about our contribution to the project, which is all about um, the transport refrigeration whole chain monitoring system. So for today, I will be briefly discussing who NEXT is, what are we going to contribute, and what do we do. All right, so firstly, we are our Toyota Trusha NEXT Electronics Singapore PPE LTD. And from the name itself, we are under Toyota Group which merely focuses on um, semiconductor components distribution, such as ICs, PCBs, and as such. And we also do EMS business and um, Internet of Things or IoT business 
which includes hardware and software development. So we are established through merging of two established electronics companies, namely Toyota Chusho and Salmon Electronics in 2018. Um, our main office is located in Singapore. Uh, while here in the Philippines, we are located in Laguna Techno Park in Binyan City, uh, Laguna. So around the world, Nexty Electronics have 38 offices. So that's nine offices in our headquarter, Japan, and six offices in ASEAN, including our office here in the Philippines. So um, in the Philippines alone, we have around 11 employees, uh, three of which are dedicated to the marketing team, including our country manager, Mr. Yusato, our sales manager, Mr. Danny Bisares, and yours truly. So um, why are we contributing uh, to this project and how our monitoring system helps to create a sustainable cold chain in the Philippines? So um, when we started promoting our IoT solutions uh, here in the country, we have learned about the challenges experienced by different uh, warehouses and logistics companies, uh, particularly in the cold chain industry. So that includes um, losses during transport of goods, uh, emissions and consumptions, of course, affecting our environment. Uh, compliance to food safety and other regulations, and then the challenges in monitoring uh, goods real time. So learning all about this, uh, we aim to contribute by helping to address uh, those challenges through the use of our advanced cold chain technologies. So what is this technology all about? Um, as you can see on the screen, our system is um, a smart cold chain monitoring system, which basically helps our uh, users or customers to monitor all the data they need remotely and in real time. So wherever and whenever they need to check it. So for an instance, uh, whether you're in the warehouse or um, at the office, uh, you can monitor the location, the temperature, humidity, and door status of your truck um, for example, earlier, we dispatched earlier this morning. So what do we do is we install our hardware to the refrigerated um, vehicles. So that, in, uh, that includes temperature sensors, humidity sensors, uh, door switch, and GPS tracker. So we can also include other parameters according to the needs of the user. Um, and then we can connect our uh, hardware to the cloud for real-time monitoring through SIM card uh, via 2G and 3G connectivity. So we also provide dashboard or a web application to the user for them to monitor all the data gathered from the hardware installed to the vehicles by themselves. So basically, uh, the hardware and the software uh, plus the dashboard and cloud server, uh, we offer all-in-one package solution that uh, we are currently providing to our uh, clients. So um, what are the functions that we can get from the system? So some of those include GPS position display, uh, GPS trajectory, geofencing, um, speed display, data backup, so that uh, when communication is interrupted, backup power uh, is available, uh, access authentication for security purposes, temperature display, of course, um, temperature abnormality report, uh, status display, and other functions uh, according to the customer's requirements. So these functions are applicable not just to fridge trucks, but also to reefer containers, uh, cold storage warehouses, refrigerators, chillers, and other temperature controlled uh, facilities. So this is our web application image. So this may include, but are not limited to 
uh, list of active devices, real-time positioning tracking, then we also have the data from the sensors, uh, the location history, and then the geofence report. So uh, basically, we can customize also the dashboard. And then uh, if you already have a system and don't want to use another one, you can use your own application and you'll provide the data using uh, application interface. And then finally, of course, you can monitor your uh, assets or your trucks uh, remotely in real time by mobile terminal. Uh, there you go. So um, if you're looking for new technology that will help solve any of those challenges that we have mentioned earlier, uh, we recommend to use our code monitoring system um, because sometimes we tend to overlook the um, monitoring or the importance of the monitoring part uh, throughout the cold chain process because uh, sometimes it seems like it's not impactful but as we know over time the accumulation uh, of losses is very significant and sometimes alarming so uh, as early as possible uh, we want to prevent this negative occurrences such as losses um, from happening through a systematic cold chain uh, monitoring system. Um, so that's all. Uh, thank you for listening. Hello, April. Can you hear me? Hello, yes. Hi, yes. No, thank you for your presentation. Um, no, it's very interesting to see um, what you guys are doing and how the um, solution that you have will help, you know, reduce food loss because of it will help increase the, the monitoring and the accuracy for the, especially the logistics operators and the truck operators who are transporting the food. Um, I was just curious, I, I would like to ask uh, just one follow-up question. What has been some of the, the feedback you've learned um, from some of the customers that have already deployed the solution? Um, what was sort of the main benefit that they said they got uh, when, they, when they used uh, the system? Um, most of the customers that we have, uh, they have premium products or critical products. So um, monitoring, using our monitoring system actually helped them a lot um, because during the transport, you'll not be able to monitor it very well because as of the moment, uh, most of the logistics companies in the Philippines are using analog. So uh, they weren't able to really uh, monitor, uh, especially during the transport, the temperature. So mm -hmm. uh, there are lots of losses if uh, we're not going to really monitor those, uh, especially premium products um, remotely and real time. So that's one yes. of the benefits that uh, we'll be claiming from this monitoring system. Yeah, perfect. And, um, you know, not of, of course, not only for premium products, but just, uh, just food in general, food that's being transported can definitely contribute to that. Um, and that in itself is a sustainable uh, development for the cold chain because reducing food waste is very important. So yes, uh, thank you very much uh, for your pre presentation. Um, okay, let, let us move on now. I'm going to um, share my screen here and I'm just gonna put up uh, the uh, slide again where we're displaying um, the contributions that we discussed today. And um, let me open the floor up now to uh, questions, uh, Q and A. And if anybody has any questions, we still have our panelists um, available. Um, we're gonna check to see if we have any questions here now. And if we don't have any questions, I'm also going to see, I have some questions written down here. I'm gonna see if I can ask, ask them as well. Um, but let me see, I, I see here, um, do we have Manuel available? Uh, it looks like um, he's here. Uh, I think Manuel would, would like to answer ask a question. Uh, let me see if I can get Manuel on the line. Uh, Manuel, can you can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Kevin, yes. can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yes, uh, perfect. Yeah, uh, if, it would be great if uh, you could introduce yourself really quickly. And also, I noticed that you had uh, a couple questions coming in. Yeah, uh, I am Manuel Azucena. I'm, uh, I'm one of the directors of uh, local uh, association here in the Philippines. 
And uh, I, I'm connected with UN Environment and based in Bahrain, but now here in the Philippines. Oh, uh, actually, uh, uh, Philip of uh, Product Blocks has just answered one of my uh, questions. But the question is, uh, if they have a plan to to supply this refrigeration truck in the Middle East with high, high ambient uh, temperatures, and if ever uh, they supplied it, what was the performance? Because you know, it's a uh, high ambient uh, temperature and some of the refrigerants are really problematic when it comes to high ambient temperatures. Yeah, basically, so uh, thanks for that. So I've answered uh, in written, uh, yeah. basically propane, uh, which we've tested the system, uh, of course, in uh, our climatic chamber, endurance test at high temperature. Uh, having said that, meaning that um, we tested at 550 degrees uh, endurance test and it's functioning as it should be. Um, while, because uh, the air 290 has a high, you know, in the two phase, it has a really high uh, critical temperature, critical temperature and yeah. is providing uh, us this opportunity. Yeah. Um, we haven't, um, because we are a startup, we are pretty new there out there. And uh, if we can have an uh, offline bilateral discussion on that, Manuel, and how we can approach this market. Uh, I have a meeting uh, this Thursday uh, that with uh, someone that is maintaining, uh, maintenance, doing maintenance uh, of transport refrigeration units uh, in uh, the Arab world, if you want to say so. Uh, and um, he's traveling to Bahrain uh, in, in one week and he is willing to address our uh, need to put our solution out there. Uh, but I'm looking forward that we can stop, we can stop, we can have a, um, outside of this meeting, a bilateral discussion. What are the opportunities and how do you believe that could be done? Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I, th I think. Uh... Uh, as I mentioned, uh, I, I traveled a lot in the Middle East, and most of the refrigeration trucks I've seen are running each on either 134A or 404A. And uh, yeah. you know, hot countries are really looking for alternatives that will really work well with uh, their ambience. So I hope that this chance, this is one of the answers to their uh, problems. You know. Yeah. So sure, sure. So uh, we are aware of that because I was working in the past uh, in the railway segment. Uh, so I, I knew those issues. So uh, we are aware of that. And, um, but as I said, so uh, if you have any contacts or, uh, you know, a single point of contact that can help us yeah. there uh, to yeah. get into it, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Manuel, can you please stay with us a little bit more? I would like to ask you a question since, since you were kind enough to join us. You have been involved in a number of different projects when it comes to natural refrigerants, namely R20, but you have also yeah. worked on uh, certification safety standards with different bodies in, in the Philippines. Can you tell us a little bit more about if there is any existing obstacle for use and deployment of uh, refrigerants across the board, natural refrigerants in Philippines? Can you comment on this, please? Uh John, uh, I'm sorry, I, I lost your, I lost the connection. Can you repeat the question again? Sure, it's not a problem. You have been involved uh, with a number of different organizations in Philippines working on the safety standards uh, and regulations and training manuals. Can you please tell us a little bit more on what is the situation on the ground? Are there any obstacles, some barriers for deployment of natural refrigerants in different applications? Or what is the state, what is the status on, let's say, training safety standards this area? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Jan. Uh, actually, that's one of my supposedly questions to the panelists. You know, my, my question is uh, supposed to be, uh, what do you think are the barriers on why R290 commercial refrigeration units uh, penetration in the Philippine market is so slow? Oh, so what are the barriers? But uh, going back to your question is that uh, certification system for uh, R290, uh, R600 hydrocarbons has been in place and... Uh, by, by next year, we are expecting that this will uh, be institutionalized in all the assessment centers and training centers in the Philippines because it has been just uh, approved by the board uh, last uh, September. Uh, this, this September, it has been approved and uh, it will be rolled out. Uh, but I think by the end of this year, uh, uh, regional lead assessors uh, training will be held uh, on how to implement the certification system for uh, natural refrigerants. 
uh, for the standards, uh, I've been also involved, no? but uh, there are certain standards now that has been in place in the Philippines, like uh, IS, uh, PNS, it has been adapted by the Philippines, like PNS uh, 6335-240 and uh, ISO uh, 5149. So we have, uh, we have uh, uh, standards that has been in place already. Excellent. Thank you very much, Manuel. Much appreciated. Uh, I would like to ask our panelists, uh, what, what is it that would be helping you to decide doubling down on your investment in Philippines when it comes to availability of your technology, when it comes to building stronger presence, larger office, more stuff on the ground? What, what is it that would be reassuring that Philippines is not ready? Is it uh, is it an incentive from the government? Is it more buy-in from the uh, from the end users on the ground? What, what is it that you would be seeking uh, as a signal for you to invest more in Philippines for these solutions? Uh, can I can I start uh, maybe with Roberto? Uh, then uh, we can uh, address the others, please. Yes, thank you, Yana. I think that. Uh, uh from uh, EPTA, had done already a good and important investment in the Philippines with uh, and now we are there with a strong presence. So definitely I think that uh, we believe uh, a lot uh, in, in, uh, in the Philippines in the business that then we can uh, uh, develop in this country. Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, who would like to be next? Uh, maybe Emilio, Sumitra, or uh, if you like to please comment. Uh, uh, I don't know if Sumitra's on. Um, I guess it's a little weird for us. We're, uh, to give you our answer, uh, Jan, we're uh, pretty much 100% committed to R290. And uh, so for us, it's not something we're, we're holding back on or anything like that. Uh, as a matter of fact, we'd like it to, um, to, to, to grow much faster. Strangely enough, uh, what I think will grow the industry is uh, more um, contractors here in the Philippines who are familiar with R290. It's a little strange for us because they would be our competitors, right? So, but I think one of the obstacles we see is when we talk to customers is you know how to do it, but nobody else knows how to do it. So either if you're busy or uh, you go out of business, we're gonna be stuck with a system that nobody, has to, nobody knows how to fix. So I think it's in everybody's interests to, to try to get more contractors such as us trained in the system like this. And it should thank be better for everybody. Thank, thank you, Emilio. This, this comes around uh, basically to the whole purpose and function of the hub, right? FAP, the, the function and the, the, the purpose of the hub is to create the training platform for the industry to be more familiar with uh, new technologies such as R290. So we really hope that we can play an active role in educating and training the, the industry, the contractors, including our competitors. I believe the market is big enough for, for, for others to join this, this, this trend. But Sumitra, sure. would you like to add something here? Yes, I just like to add some information here is that um, for the R290, actually it is, um, what we actually produce is for, um, for the very safe, high standard safety from the factory itself. So how to implement it or how to um, educate it more on the R290 and how safety that they can use with R290 is the, the most important thing. I think uh, Philippines market actually ready to uh, just, they're actually ready to using R290 from my perception that I've been uh, going around in Philippines and talking to customer, just only as uh, uh, Emil mentioned, uh, the thing that they are not really familiar with that's why we actually would like to this uh, contribution that we also want to do all the trainings and also to have more partners to be able to handling R290. So in this case, all the customer would you know, uh, feel uh, rest assured to uh, using R290. Even for, let's say for Southeast Asia, the whole, uh, the, the market has been growing very, very quickly. Let's say for Thailand alone, using the plugin for the R290 more than 10,000 units, only for macro only for one customer, 10,000 units. And that is actually uh, performed very well. And I see that the market in the Philippines, customer in Philippines actually really accept the new technologies. 
I believe this is a very fast growing after they understand, after we have this uh, crowd already for understanding for using the natural refrigerants. I think the market will grow very, very fast in the Philippines. Thank you very much, Sumitra. That's fantastic. And thank you for your comment regarding Thailand. We have been involved with the industry for, for uh, some time. And uh, it was good to see that there is local production opportunity. There was quite a lot going on on that front. Can you maybe just uh, help us understand a little bit what was the, the this decision making process for Metro to go in this direction in Thailand? Because this is quite a large commitment. Uh, it's four times the, the number of units available in Japan. So, so good on Metro. And can you please tell us a little bit about this case study in Thailand? Yeah, because of uh, Thailand, we starting since uh, 2006, that the uh, first implementation for the R290 for the uh, plug-in unit. So there were actually, we have been testing with them to see the, all the benefit that they learned. They be putting about like half a year for them to test and try and see what is an obstacle that they probably see. After they've been testing and then running the, the units for um, almost one year, and then boom, they see that there's nothing happening. They actually have a better energy performance, everything good. A uh, very low cost of um, uh, maintenance cost is really completely almost gone. Every, a lot of benefit that they've been using. That's why they're starting to implement it to replace all the remote island freezer, traditional um, con, um, remote system. Uh, 500 units in one go, they change all the store that they have like gradually until today they have for more than 10,000 units of the island freezer plug-in from AHT. So did this decision, uh, it, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced it has to come hand in hand with basically the business case for these technologies. I'm sure that they have not making decisions solely on the, the level of, on the, you know, the sustainability aspect of the project. The business case is there. What is the ROI on this investment in, in, in general for installing the R290 plugins? Maybe also we can ask uh, for the comments for others, but Sumitra, what is the ROI for these end users? Actually, because of when we first launched of the unit, um, the ROI compared to the remote island freezer is actually immediately. Because of the cost of investment of the unit itself, very low compared to the whatever existing that they are using. So immediately replace it, they already have a return of investment, basically Sorry. for that time, yes. Okay. But uh, for Philippines, I would say that uh, I was calculating for when we trying to promote R290 for a customer here in Philippines, we have around like, as uh, email mentioned, about 100 units uh, in Philippines. Um, firstly, the business case is on the return of investment for Philippines because the highest, I would say Philippines has the highest uh, energy cost in Southeast Asia. So the return of investment is about one year, one and a half year. So it's very promising for the, for the customer who actually want to try. And also uh, the, 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 the second opportunities that they can actually save the, the CO2 emission as well. Very good. I mean, it, it, everything we, we hear from all of you uh, is, is pointing to a very clear business case for these technologies. So it, there, there, there aren't any massive obstacles on the way. This is really about us, the industry coming together and addressing you know, the general awareness about these technologies, have a little bit of the hands-on experience. And that's precisely what we, what we intend to with, with the hub to provide that, that function. Hands-on experience for these technologies. It's not a rocket science. It has been deployed around the world in millions of units. So let's just make it happen. That, that's the message uh, that, we, that we hear from all of you. Anybody else would like to comment on uh, some of these uh, topics in terms of business uh, return on investment of the of the of these technologies, some possible barriers, opportunities, signals from the market that you are seeking? Philip, I see you joining. Maybe you like to add something. Uh, I just want to 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 confirm that what you said. So basically, um, just saying that uh, we are sustainable is not in, good enough. So it has to be a business case out there. So the solution provided on the market needs to be transparent and needs to communicate these benef benefits that uh, the hydrocarbons are bringing with themselves. So high temperature, higher efficiency, lower weight, and so on and so on. So this is just, uh, it fits the problem or so it solves the problem. It's not fit, it solves the problem. So the problem solution fit is there and the sustainability is a gain 
on that uh, that is adding uh, the most important maybe part of the game for, for me at least. But uh, we are solving the problems that uh, potential end users are having by these technologies. And this is the most important one. Thank you very much, Philip. Uh, we, are, we have reached our time, but we can keep going for a few more minutes. Anyone from the panelists would like to add anything mm -hmm. uh, to these topics or ask a question to others? Jan, uh, this yes, please. please. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. For us in the automotive and uh, manufacturing industry, uh, we really need to know more about this product of CR290 because right now we really don't know yet how what about about this product, how the technology works. We do not know how much product knowledge seminar we have to conduct for our staff and our account executive, our dealers. We don't know how much advertising and marketing we need to sell the products to our dealers. We don't know whether we have to retool our facilities, revise our production process flow, and do we need to maintain an inventory of new sets of materials and parts. And more importantly, uh, after sales service, if uh, if an R290 uh, vehicle is brought out of Metro Manila, are there, are there technicians outside of Metro Manila who are able to maintain and repair these uh, these uh, these uh, these transport vehicles? No? so we still need to do a lot of uh, education along this line. Absolutely, very very important points raised, and, and uh, this is precisely why we are starting the, the pilot projects under the hub. To, to get on this learning curve. There's clearly a learning curve that we need to move on uh, towards, but the, the fact that this, uh, this topic is being discussed as we speak and uh, the team of these companies is, is getting together to make it happen is, is very reassuring. And again, we are not aware of any such similar projects happening anywhere else in, in Southeast Asia or, or Asia. So I think we are, we are on, on, on something really uh, you know, exciting. There's a, there's a high potential for this technology, but as you said, many, many topics to be addressed still. So very important points. Thank you. And I think, uh, Jan, the partnership with TESDA is in the right direction. That would fast track the training uh, nationwide because they have uh, learning centers nationwide who could, who could do the R290 trainings. That's excellent. And then again, we're very happy to have TESDA involved. And uh, over the next uh, weeks, there will be some exciting announcements to be made in regarding to TESDA and Culture Innovation Hub. So we do hope to be uh, to be present on the ground. The pandemic itself caused uh, some delays that we are not very happy about, but that's that's what uh, the whole industry globally had to deal with. However, uh, over the next uh, few weeks, we uh, we do uh, plan uh, various activities and we'll be keeping everyone in 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 the loop, of course. Devin, uh, would you like to? Uh, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, no, no questions or comments. Uh, but let me just. Um share one one last thing uh, with our attendees. Um, I'm just going to pull up our, our website here. And uh, for anybody who would like uh, more information or would like to see um, inf uh, presentations and slides from our past events, please make sure to log on to our website, cci-hub.org. Um, and also make sure to sign up for our email list to make sure that you get um, all the updates, including these recorded webinar presentations as soon as they're published and the, the uh, presentation slides from all of our panelists. Um, we have a, a resources page where we publish um, all the information from our past events, um, PDFs and our uh, videos that we've published on YouTube. We have uh, research that we've conducted um, that's uh, freely available on our websites and you can also keep up to date on uh, our uh, upcoming events and also learn more about our, our contributors. We've started a, a new page on our website recently where we are listing our, our first con contributors and uh, the specific uh, contributions that they're making to the, the hub. So yeah, let me just um, say again, thank you very much. Um, Jan, let me uh, shoot it back to you just to close things off in case we don't have any last questions. Thank you, Devin. Uh, I would like to just you know uh, continue what Devin already, already said that we are looking for further uh, contributions. We would also love to hear from the end users uh, on the ground in Philippines in different sectors of food cold chain get in touch with us, let us know what kind of solutions you are uh, looking for in terms of being, uh, being part of the hub, uh, something that you, you would uh, look uh, into installing at your own uh, facilities. We have a number of ongoing discussions with suppliers basically around the world, covering uh, many other uh, applications and technologies from ice machines to large uh, refrigeration systems. We are accepting components. We are accepting training, uh, com you know, training materials as well as the expert days uh, time. So uh, we are quite open to work with uh, everyone out there. So if you hear us, please get in touch. We'll be keep on uh, communicating about our activities. 
And we hope that this is, uh, the, the, the plan is that this is the first of the series that will be uh, dedicated to contributors and the new technologies and pilot projects developed under the hub. So uh, we welcome others and uh, we hope that in a few weeks time latest, we will be back in touch with everyone. We will organize the contributor session number two, this time uh, hopefully also with involvement of already existing contributors, the Kerry Transigold and Panasonic and Hussman. To, to advocate for their solutions based on the CO2 transcritical, which is very exciting opportunity for the Philippines as well. So uh, we would like to make this a regular event that will be providing the update from the side of the project partners and contributors working very closely with the industry. So very much looking forward to, to working with you everyone. With that, I would like to say uh, thank you to all the contributors and all the listeners who join us today. And uh, we wish you uh, to be well and stay safe. I'm looking forward to uh, talking to you and hearing from you soon again. Bye bye. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Jan. Thanks, Devin. Thanks, Pan. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Have a good day. Thank bye. you. Bye bye. Stay safe.